Okay, our final example today has both a B and a C value that aren't one. So we have to deal with both an amplitude and a um, period change. And um, in this case, B is equal to negative a half, which means the amplitude is going to be a half. The C value is going to be what? What do you think the C value is here? This is what we're taking sign of, right? Mm -hmm. What's being multiplied by X? One-third, right? There's an understood one in front of the x, so one-third is being multiplied by the x. Be careful with the vision like that. There's always a number in front of x, so if there isn't, just assume there will be a one there. So c is equal to one-third, and this is where people tend to mess up if they're going to mess up. Period on this one. Two pi divided by a third. Okay. A lot of people want to say two-thirds pi because they see a third and they think, that. But division by a third is multiplication by three, so that actually equals six pi. So keep in mind, two pi divided by one third is the same as two pi times three over one, so it ends up being six pi. Be careful with that. A lot of times the number in front of x is a fraction that creates a number bigger than two pi, not less. So if period six pi, and I'm supposed to take six pi over four, whatever the period is, six pi over four, because I'm going to have four dashes, right? That gets me a 3 pi over 2 step. So each dash represents 3 pi over 2 spaces. So here's 0. I'm going to go dash 1, dash 2, dash 3, dash 4. 3 pi over 2 is the first one. 3 pi over 2 plus itself is 6 pi over 2, which is the same as 3 pi. 6 pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 make 9 pi over 2. Still, that's going to stay a fraction because it's odd. And 9 pi over 2 plus 3 pi over 2 is 12 pi over 2, which is 6 pi. And we can see that we get the correct period. So if you want to make sure you're stepping up by the right amount, just go ahead and step up by that amount. The final dash should be what the period is if you did it correctly. That's our x-axis. Our y-axis right here, dash up, dash down. Amplitude's a half, so this is positive a half, negative a half. The first problem went up and down two. The second problem up and down one. This one up and down a half. So each one's getting a little bit shorter than the other one, right? I'll keep that in mind. Um, I can see that B's original value is a negative value. For B less than zero, we're going to start by going zero bottom, zero top, zero. So, always start at zero, and we go to the bottom, zero back to top, zero. Connect. Put the smooth curve. With practice, you'll get pretty decent at drawing those. When I was a junior in high school, I could not draw them as smooth as I can do it now. But just keep that in mind that you kind of get that feel for how to do it. Um, and again, if we look at that one on the same window that we're using, so I'm going to turn on equation 3, and I'm going to set my window from 0 to 6 pi at a 3 pi over 2 scale. And I'm going to go negative a half to a half at a half scale, hit graph. Once again, we're going to get exactly the same looking graph. Again, the window's different. All right, so, again, what we're doing here is we're just allowing each of these graphs to look pretty much the same. All right? In reality, that's the biggest x window I had. The biggest y window I had was negative 2 to 2, right? Put that at one scale. I'll turn on all three graphs and just take a look at all three put together. Okay. The period of this last one was much wider, right? So the first one had a 2 pi period, so we should get three of the same graph within this window. And the second one had a 2 period. This goes all the way to 18.84, so we're going to see nine of those in the same window. And the first one up 2, the second one went up 1, the last one up a half. All right, so take a look at them in relation to each other. There's our first one. There's the first period, second period, and third period. Second one, first period, second period, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and a little bit more. And there's our last one, goes to one full period. It's halfway through and all the way through. Okay, so they don't look the same in reality, but again, the way we're going to graph, they're going to look the same for now. The purpose of my way of teaching this ACT is the main place you guys are going to need to know this. Mm -hmm. Okay, And in the ACT, they're going to say which of the following is the graph of this function. 
So if you are able to pinpoint amplitudes and periods, you should be able to identify in which way it goes up or down to begin with. You should be able to pinpoint which graph it is. Or even better, here's the graph which is the right function. So if you can identify the amplitude and the period and the direction it goes to begin with, you can establish the correct equation for that. So that's the main reason most of you are going to be using this. If you go on to some bigger and better mathematical career, um, my guess is you'll understand trigonometry well enough anyway that you can probably graph them in whatever scale you need to graph them at that point.